so it's usually morning meeting so emails morning meeting breakfast work work meeting work lunch work work meeting work work dinner work home repeat What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Asal Hussein and you can find out a bit more about me in the social media links below. And also you can check out a few of the projects that I'm working on through my website. If you haven't already or if you're new here, do subscribe to the channel. Turn on post notifications, that way every time I release a video every Wednesday, you'll be the first to hear about it. Two weeks ago, we spoke about how to secure an internship at Goldman Sachs. And then last week, the video focused on the differences between the front office of an investment bank and the back office of an investment bank and which, di which, which different divisions were in each of the front office and the back office and what type of roles and expectations you can expect if you start off your career in those areas. By popular demand and a lot of you have been requesting this video, today we're going to be sp speaking about a day in the life of a Goldman Sachs analyst. Many of you will know I graduated and joined Goldman Sachs Asset Management in a sales role and I spent a few years there and so oftentimes you go to a lot of these networking events or presentations and you're told what the analysts or the associates or the VPs do on a day-to-day -day basis and they always say every day is different but they never really go into detail on what they actually do and so today I wanted to address that and give you an in-depth insight into what an analyst not just at Goldman Sachs but what you can expect to be doing as a first-year analyst now a quick caveat because there will be a lot of people wondering you know surely an analyst role differs from front office and back office from division to division so someone on the trading floor as an analyst, their role is going to differ to someone in asset management, to someone in the investment banking division, to someone in technology or operations, so on and so forth. And that is very true. And so given I spent time in asset management, it makes sense for me to talk about my experience in asset management and what I was doing as an analyst in asset management in a sales role. So in asset management, there's two key roles that you kind of start into as a graduate analyst. One is a sales role, so you become a salesperson. The other is an investment professional or a product person or a product specialist. That role is more technical and you become a specialist in a certain area of the financial markets as opposed to a client facing salesperson. Now as a trader your role is going to be completely different and your day to day is going to be different. As an investment banking analyst your day to day is also going to be very different um, and same for someone in technology or operations. But the value I can add is my insight on the day to day of an analyst in asset management. I've put timestamps below so you can skip to the bits that you're most interested in but I'm going to be speaking about four key things in this video and how an analyst day is split into these. So the first of which is meetings, both internal meetings and external meetings. The second of which are requests, so similarly internal requests from your team and other teams and external requests from clients. The third is you, so your personal and career development while you're working as an analyst, the things you can do to kind of get ahead and be a good analyst. And then fourth and finally, which are very important, are the soft skills. So Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, Word, um, the soft skills that you need to be more efficient and productive throughout your role as an analyst. If any questions or video suggestions come to mind throughout the video or if you think I skipped something or if you want me to elaborate on something leave a comment below um, and I'll do a video on those as soon as possible. It sounds cliche but no two days are exactly the same. However what we can do is bucket different parts of the day into meetings, work, requests, right? So a typical day would be so the night before you're checking your emails on what used to be a blackberry but now you can check it on your samsung on your iphone whatever it might be um, through the app that the firm uses so each firm will use a different app or some firms use a similar app and then you check your emails the night before you go to bed you wake up um, and then you get in so as a sales analyst at goldman sachs asset management get in the office anywhere between 8 a.m and 8 30 a.m um, if you're if you're working on a piece of uh, if you're working on a file or an important document that needs to go out super early, you would obviously get in the office by 7.30, 7am earlier as and when you need to. So typically get in 8 to 8.30am and then at 8.30am you've got the market meeting. So every morning at 8.30 there's a 30 or so minute meeting 
um, it's basically a market update of what happened the day before and it touches on the different regions um, and the different countries and different markets what's been going on what do we need to be aware of then after that you might go to the canteen grab some breakfast eat it on your desk and then you're gonna have uh, you're going to just work on your different projects you're going to work then you're going to probably have an internal or an external meeting then you do some more work and then you go for lunch um, bring it back to your desk you eat lunch on your desk which is common or you might go and have lunch with a colleague after that you come back do some more work you might have another client meeting or an internal meeting and then you do some more work you do some more work and then people start leaving and you're still staying and then you have dinner so oftentimes in all the investment banks after like 7 or 8 p.m you get like i think it's 15 pounds or so um to spend in the canteen um because you're working hard and you're working late it's usually past 7 or 8 p.m you go to the canteen get your dinner bring it back to your desk you eat and then you work some more and then you leave at about 9 or 10 p.m um if you if you're busy the product guys tend to that's they tend to work longer than the sales people sales people usually leave at about 7 8 p.m but if you're busy, it's just like revision or for exams. When it's exam season, you're going to be studying longer. You're going to be in the library for more time. And so when you're working on client documents or important pieces of work, you're going to be in the office longer. So the general day to day, you get in at about 8 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. And you're leaving at about 7 or 8 p.m. Um, and it lengthens given the workload or, you know, how busy you are. That's basically a day in the life of an analyst but now obviously you're probably wondering okay what does work mean what does client meeting me mean you know give us some more color so that's exactly what i'm going to do so if we focus on the first so we've got meetings we've got requests we've got your own personal development and career development and then we've got soft skills so if you start with meetings meetings can be either internal or external the first meeting in the day is the market meeting so you go to this morning meeting and you get updates from the different product specialists and investors and traders and as an analyst what you're expected to do or what's what you should be doing is have your pen and paper and take notes when you go back to your desk or throughout the day if anyone asks you what's going on in the markets or you know what did they talk about in the morning meeting you're aware of what's going on in the world and you're kept up to date you don't want to be in a position where you know you're not clued up or you're not commercially aware when we started you take these notes you, there's a rotor between you and the other analysts you take these notes um, and it might be your turn once every two weeks you type them up and then you distribute it to like a thousand people on the email distribution so anyone that was or was not at the meeting can have an update of the morning meeting through your notes so it's important to be an efficient note taker because you don't know who that's going to go to it goes to every level analyst associate VP MD and even partner so it's super important to make sure your notes are very efficient and productive and very well structured now that's the morning meeting after you do that the other types of meetings are internal and external meetings so internal meetings are basically you're in a room with either your team members or in your sales team or individuals from different teams within the investment bank or the asset management business now what happens in internal meetings for the most part is you're all kind of pitching together ideas in order to produce a document or a presentation or a file for a client so it's basically a few people in a room and you're discussing different things in order to produce good quality content or a service for the end client what your role is this is important so in any internal meeting same again as an analyst keep your pen and paper always with you you're going to be taking notes and then you might need to type up the notes and distribute it to members of your team and the other teams who were not at the meeting or in general just to keep a track of what's going on in this timeline for this client so as well as taking notes and distributing them in those meetings what you are likely to be expected to do is if that meeting the outcome needs to be a presentation slide or a few slides for a presentation you're likely going to be working on that presentation so you need to take the right notes make sure anything that people are saying in that meeting is being noted down and then you're going to leave that meeting with those notes and create a presentation slide a piece of work that you give it to your seniors they check it tell you if you need to change it adapt anything change anything and then that goes back and forth back and forth and then when it's nice and ready it gets printed and taken to the client meetings that's internal meetings and then you've got client meetings so once you're at the client meeting if you're lucky your team will take you to client meetings now fortunately at Goldman's um, you know in asset management 
they encourage taking analysts to client meetings and they were quite good it's good for your personal development um and you know you, you're not going to learn by just being at your desk all day so it's good that they take you to client meetings you get to build relationships and you know you see what happens because as humans we learn by doing right and seeing rather than just um, not being thrown in at the deep end so when you're going to client meetings your senior is obviously going to lead the meeting and then your role in that meeting is same same again as internal and the morning meetings mm -hmm. pen paper pen paper and take notes everything that gets said not so much every single thing that gets said in the meeting but what you want to do is capture the vibe of that meeting what's you know what type of questions are the clients asking um, does it seem positive does it seem negative what do they want to know a bit more on it's always important to capture the key questions it's always good for your knowledge to take down as many notes as possible uh, questions that have been asked and the answers that were produced from your organization because that's genuinely good for your personal knowledge and development and technical knowledge but the purpose of the meeting note is when you go back to your desk you're going to type it up and distribute it to your team and other team members right so you need to capture how that meeting went summarize it well um, and then distribute that so anyone that reads that note that you produced can feel like they were at the meeting the more info you can give relevant info the better so that's what you're going to be doing in client meetings so we've touched on meetings now we're going to go into requests similar to meetings requests can be either internal or external regardless of whether they are internal or external the key in order to to being successful in handling and managing requests um, is to be able to navigate your organization's different teams. What I mean by that is basically a client might send a request into your email asking for a document, a file, a presentation or more information on a particular product or item or asset class that your organization or Goldman Sachs in this case focuses on or provides and so it's your responsibility to make sure you know when they need it and get it to them before they need it you know on time is late ahead of time is on time um, get it to them ASAP and in order to do that you need to know exactly what are they asking for who do you need to go and work with to get it first thing you need to do is if you can do it yourself make sure you do it and then get someone more senior than you um, in your team to check that it's good and then get it out send it to the client secondly if you you know have a go at it see how much you can do and then go to the product team so the technical people or the investors and ask them for their help because they will know if it's product related if it's specific to an asset class they will be able to give you the relevant information um, but they will get annoyed if you just send them thing if something comes in and you just send it to them without attempting to you know have a go at it yourself they will get annoyed because they've got a hundred thousand things on their to-do list that they need to do so people appreciate it if you have a goal and if you get stuck then you give it to them you're gonna go you need to know which product team to go to or more specifically who in that product team do you have a good relationship with to um, work with so don't go to the senior person in that team because they're gonna be busy go to an analyst have a good relationship with an analyst in that product team or across all product teams if you've got a good relationship with the different members of those teams then when you're in times of need when you need something super urgent if you've got a friend in those teams you give them that work they'll be able to help you out and get you that to the client and vice versa when they're in times of need be that person that you know you can help them or they can feel comfortable to come to you to kind of you know uh, lean on in times of need so internal external requests client requests something you need to know who in the organization to go to to get that piece of work as fast as possible to a high quality standard and get it out to the client that way you've done a good job client is happy great work now on internal requests same thing so your team or other individuals in the organization or other teams might ask you for something specific to your role or specific to a client you need to know how to navigate the organization in order to get them that piece of work and always ask when do they need it and then get it to them before the deadline um, and understand clearly oftentimes people don't understand the question it's important to know what you need to get the last thing you want to do is work so hard on a piece of on a project or piece of work 
get it to them and it's the wrong information and then you don't have enough time to rectify the problem. So be efficient, navigate the firm, leverage your contacts, leverage your networks. A good tip for you to leverage your networks or expand your networks within your organization is simple 30 minute catch ups into people's calendars. Go for coffee with different people, ask them about their story, how they got into the role, what they do, um, and you know, just build a working relationship because you can't succeed on your own. You need the help of other people within your organization. And you know, the people that climb in these organizations tend to be those who are who have strong relationships across the firm, across the division, and who network well internally as well as externally. So that's meetings and requests and how to manage and handle those. Now what we're going to be talking about are, is you, so your personal and career development as an analyst. So you know, as an analyst it's good to come and just do all the mundane tasks, all the grunt work, all the hustle work, you know, the things that the seniors don't get paid to do and you know you're going to be doing let's say some of the boring stuff but some of the exciting stuff so going to client meetings. But what's very important is the fact that you have to develop as an individual and you need to develop your career. So these come in the form of, so what happens is you might be given stretch assignments from your manager. Um, so these can be, it's basically things from six months from now or one year from now, you need to be working on these stretch assignments in order to make you a better analyst. Stretch assignments can be in a sales role, building your external connections. So going for coffees and catch ups with your clients, building your internal networks. You know, if you're an introvert, I started at Goldman, I was an introvert, and so I didn't feel comfortable putting in 30 minute coffee catch ups into people's calendars. But in order for me to grow and develop my career, I needed to meet lots of people from different teams. So external, internal and external networks, develop those. That might be a stretch assignment. Another stretch assignment might be your technical skills. As a salesperson, you're not a technical specialist, you don't have strong knowledge on equities, fixed income, alternatives, multi-asset, quant. All these areas, all these products that the organization sells and you've got analysts who work in these areas who are very technical. As a salesperson, you're not going to be as technical as them, but it might be a good idea for the sake of your team and your clients for you to develop that knowledge. So a stretch assignment might be for a salesperson or AFSAL in this case to develop strong technical skills. So that's another stretch assignment. Another one might be, so in the world of asset management, your clients are going to be either sovereign wealth funds, insurance companies, pension schemes or consultants. Now when I was at Goldman's our clients were consultants and broadly speaking pension schemes, right? So you need to keep up to date with what's going on in the world of pensions. You need to keep up to date with what's going on in the world of investment consulting organizations. So this touches on your commercial awareness. So six months, six to twelve months from now um, a stretch assignment might be for me to develop my commercial awareness. Um, in fact, in my first year, these were my stretch assignments. Develop my internal and external networks, um, be more, become more technical, and develop my commercial awareness. If you do these things, you're naturally going to be a better analyst in your second year. And so, day to day, you might be working on projects. You might be doing a lot more reading around the topics of um, commercial awareness. So pension schemes, investment consultants, whatever it might be. You might be doing more catch-ups with people, coffees with people to develop your internal and external relationships and networks. And finally, you might be taking it to build or develop your technical expertise. You might be required to take an exam, whether it's the CFA, the CAIA, the IMC, whatever it might be, in order to develop, to develop your technical skills a next step, a good next step is to take an exam. And so that's meetings, requests, you. And now last but not least, very, very important in order to be successful are the soft skills. So I want to specifically touch on Microsoft Office. So soft skills can be interpersonal skills, communication skills, teamwork skills, but it can also be, you know, your skills on Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint. As an analyst, these are the platforms these are the programs that you're going to be using most of your day so it's it's imperative that you're comfortable using microsoft powerpoint to create powerpoint presentations and slides that you're comfortable using microsoft excel to manipulate data create graphs charts and all of that and microsoft word the most easiest one but sometimes oftentimes we're not as proficient as we can be so 
managing your time and working on these, dedicating some time outside of work to improve your skills. Because when you're working on all these different programs, if you're efficient and you can save time, the most valuable individuals save their seniors or save people time whilst producing high quality content. Always remember that. If you can be an analyst that is saving people time and producing high quality content, you're naturally gonna be noticed and you'll naturally climb. You know, previously, I touched on a typical day, emails at night, emails in the morning, morning meeting, breakfast, uh, work, work, meeting, work, lunch, and then work, work, meeting, work, dinner, work, work. That should make a bit more sense. So every time I've said work there, that means you're either working on your personal projects, career development, and your personal uh, development, or you're working on a request from a client, or you're working on an internal meeting or an um, internal request from one of your team members or the other team members. Um, and this work is gonna usually be on either Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint or Microsoft Word, or on the internet doing some research, relevant articles, relevant data and research broadly speaking. Now, where I said meeting in the day, it's either an internal meeting or an external meeting. If it's an internal meeting, you're gonna be taking notes, being told what to create on the back of that meeting, whether it's PowerPoint slides, whether it's a presentation, you have to go away and create that. There'll be a lot of back and forth between you and your teammates. And if it's a client meeting, you're gonna be in that meeting taking down the notes, taking down the meeting notes or the minutes and typing them up when you get back to your desk and distributing them to your broader team. That is basically a day in the life of an analyst at Goldman Sachs in asset management, in sales, and it's similar for most asset management sales analysts. On the flip side, for someone in investment or product, so a more technical role in asset management, for example, their role will be similar, In the meetings will be similar. They work more on creating PowerPoint presentations rather than working on requests for clients direct requests. All the work that we do ends up going to, most of it goes to the clients anyway. However, their role, they need to focus more on becoming a specialist within a specific subsector of an asset class. So within fixed income, as an analyst in the technical side or the product team, you might be focused on emerging market debt. And then that's gonna be your baby. You focus on emerging market debt. Any requests specifically for emerging market debt, from clients or internal sales teams or whoever it might be, then you as a product specialist in emerging market debt will have to focus on getting them that work or working on those meetings and tasks. In summary, what you can expect as a first year analyst is lots of interaction with different teams, lots of client requests, managing client requests in order to get them what they want working on PowerPoint, working on Word, work, working on Excel, setting yourself personal development goals and improving your technical skills, improving your communication and teamwork skills, improving or developing an internal network within the company so people know who you are. They say it's not about what you know, it's about who you know, but it's not about who you know, it's about who knows you. So you need to develop your internal network, you need to develop your client network, so your external network. Become a master of the basics, and the small wins will make the big wins. It's simple as that. And that is literally what you can expect to do as an analyst in sales or asset management. More than anything, my message for you would be, if you're genuinely interested, the first two years will fly by because there's so much work to do that you're gonna be so engaged. You're gonna be hit with a steep learning curve and there's so much work to embrace. It's gonna be keeping you very busy. Be extremely good at the small things and then naturally everything will fall in place. Two top tips, focus on producing high quality content while saving people time. If you could do those two things, you'd be very valuable. I hope you've enjoyed that insight into what life as an analyst involves. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Any feedback, leave them in the comments below. But until then, I will catch you next week with another video. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you for taking the time. I look forward to seeing you next week. Peace.